Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on how the number of Bitcoin will inevitably decrease after all the coins are minted. I've thought about this a lot. I've never heard anyone else talk about it. Let's say a fellow has one Bitcoin, he passes away and never sets up any end of life planning. His keys die with him and that Bitcoin is inaccessible. It's not like when the grandpa dies, you just, you know, open the safe and fund the gold coins. What does that do to the price of remaining units? So, I mean, don't worry about when the last Bitcoins are mined because that's over 100 years from now. And don't even worry about the miners at that point because mining income is made up of the block reward, which is the Bitcoin you get, but it's also the transaction fees. And the amount of Bitcoin you get halves every um, every few years, every four years, is it? And then what you'll find is if Bitcoin follows its log trends, then in 100 years' time, people won't really care about the block reward that much because it'd be quite small, but the transaction fees. I mean, can you imagine if, if every transaction in the world was already running on Bitcoin? Those transaction fees would be enormous. And, and they're starting to get a bit meaningful now. So, yeah, you don't, you don't need to worry about the last Bitcoin being mined. Um, so that's the first part of that. In the second point of what about if you pass away and you lose your private keys? I mean, we've probably already lost four or five million Bitcoin from people losing their private keys. I won't. Th- th- will those coi- coins stay lost forever? I mean, there's been, there's been some recent hype about quantum computers. For example, the, the, the Satoshi wallet, which got a million Bitcoin in it, that use is quite a basic key. And so that one might be hacked by quantum computers in the future. And I suppose some of these other lost ones might be. I think we're decades away from that. But almost anybody who's got an active wallet, well, well they, they just end up um, upgrading the, um, you know, lengthening the seed phrase or something, making a more secure key on it. So I'm, I'm not worried about quantum computers on, on the rest of it. Um, so, it's, so I suppose I should say for accuracy, most of those coins are probably lost forever, although some of them might be recoverable if quantum computing does what it says. And of course, if you've died and you've lost your private keys, then you're not going to upgrade your your wallet in any way. Um, but yeah, if people die and lose their private keys and you just strengthen the value of all the existing coins by lowering the, the supply. So that's why Michael Saylor says that the most um, civic-minded thing that you can do is is die and take your private keys with you. William says, thanks for discussing this. I invest primarily in index funds and have been looking at Bitcoin with lots of FOMO, but I assume the indexes um, will also be on the rise yeah but will they be on the rise by greater than the rate of debasement that's the question is it are, are they going to rise by 18 percent? and the only one that does is, is the is the nasdaq 100 um well actually that SPY, that spy that we looked at earlier that was 25 percent a year so that's positive 11 um you have the potential um to outdo it but you don't need to do one or the other you can you can have a small allocation to something which is a bit more volatility um, thanks, Dave, for another great roundup and the advice that uh, you never gave. Um, at the end of this um, current Bitcoin cycle, if I decide to cash out a bit, what are the tax implications and how do I avoid capital gains tax? Well, I don't know what country you're in, so what your what your situation is and what your capital gains implications would be. Let's say you're in the UK. If you're holding it directly, then you need to, and, and again, it depends how long you've held the Bitcoin, whether you're on short-term capital gains or long-term capital gains. What you can do is you can download programs from the interweb, um, which plug into your exchange and they work out the tax for you. So probably probably look into that. Oh, this was a good one. Industrializing space. That was a good episode, wasn't it, chaps? Lovely episode. That Really enjoyed that one. Must get Grant on again. Yeah, lots of people saying, that it's good because, yeah, what an absolutely fascinating two hours. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Uh, Malcolm Solak says, there's a lot of talk about utilising lunar resources here. I'm not an expert, but would this have an effect on the mass of the moon and subsequently the moon's orbit around the Earth? I mean, I suppose, yeah, taken to its logical conclusion, but, I mean, you could build entire war fleets of of massive battle cruisers and the effect on the mass of the moon would be so infinitesimal that that it wouldn't have an effect. So... So yeah, I mean, if 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 taken to its real logical conclusion, then then yes, but it would you you would need many many orders of magnitude 
of greater industrial output than the whole earth has produced in its history for that to have a meaningful effect so so yeah i wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that uh nice one of my favorite brokenomics so far yeah this was a good one wasn't it uh listening to it makes me want to jump in a, v a ship and go to venus okay so lots of praise do we have any questions in this one um if you guys like this topic, you might want to check out a game on Steam, Terror Invicta, World of Warning, though. It's very difficult. Yeah, I've actually got stuck in um, Baltro, which is... So So we did, the, we did the US election special, and then me, academic agent Carl and Count Dankula, went, went for a stake before it started. And Dank was telling us about the game Baltro, which is this... It looks like the world's most rubbish little Steam card game. And it's like based on poker, but they sort of, you you kind of you need to stack the deck and add jokers who have special effects and stuff like that. And I thought, yeah, there's no way I'm going to do that anyway. So I tried it, and I've been absolutely hooked. AA has as well. You know, we can't get off the bloody thing. So yeah, so don't check out Baltro if you want to, you know, be productive. Um, right. Yeah, more more stuff about Solaris. I've I've never got into that. Um, I, sh I know I should do because it is the sort of thing that I would like, but for some reason I've never got around to it. Any any actual... Qu oh, here we go. Have you ever done a brokenomics on the basic of setting up and structuring a business? It might be handy for those looking to do something for themselves. Yeah, um, I could do it for the UK. I know what the system is in the UK. I don't think I could do it for anywhere else. But yeah, I mean, we talked earlier in this video about doing the basics of investing terms. I could do a basics on setting up a business. I mean, essentially, it's quite easy. You just, we just, there are these company formation agents that you use in the UK, UK. You just go onto the website, you tap in some details, they generate a um, articles of association and a mem memorandum and, um, you know, a share cap table uh, and register you with company's house. So, I mean, you can do it all online in, in an afternoon. You can do it in 15 minutes, setting up a company. Um, then you do the thing that makes the business, whatever that is. Um, and then at the end of the year, well, actually, you probably want to get this in place beforehand, but you get an accountant and um, you hand over bank records and a Excel spreadsheet detailing what it is you did, and then they will work out how much tax you need to pay. So, so it is, I mean, it is actually relatively straightforward, but I suppose you could do a video on that point. Uh, Grant Gibson, I think there are two missing things from this conversation, the finite travel speed for information, speed of light and human nature. Yes. I mean, it has interesting implications, the, the, the finite travel speed for the sort of the, well, what do you call geopolitics when it's no longer on the geo? Solo politics, is that what we're going to call? Yeah, but anyway, um, the logic is, is that you would expect um, the, the equivalent of nation states to become planet-based, so Jupiter and its moons, It'd be very difficult governing that from from Earth because on how long does it take light to get from Earth to Jupiter and therefore the maximum speed of communication? Uh, it's got to be several hours, isn't it? But e e e e even if it's I don't know if it's that long, maybe. But e e look, say even if it's even if it's twenty thirty minutes, whatever it is, the, the travel speed of information to from Earth to Jupiter, you, you that is enough to make it functionally rather difficult for having a united governmental system so yeah yeah so maybe if i get grant back we, we have to include that and human nature yeah which is um the colonies tend to go their own way uh, tim Hughes says dan i think you're far too optimistic about the ability to digitize humans let alone the ethics of such an ability from a purely materialistic perspective it should be possible but the past century um should be enough to demonstrate that purely materialistic metaphysics is insufficient explanation yeah, let's talk about biological continuity there. Well, yeah, but a lot, a lot of this sort of futuristic space discussion, you're not going on what is practically viable today from an engineering perspective. You're saying, do the rule, do the laws of physics explicitly rule out the thing you're trying to achieve? Uh, if no, are you assuming any rate of engineering and scientific progression at all? If yes. Um, then it's only a matter of time before whatever that thing is is achieved. So if consciousness is a function of your neurological makeup, which can be mapped, replicated, and stored in a digital form, including down to the memories. I mean, memories are just, as far as I understand it, 
um, protein chains laid out in your brain that give you memories. And the structure of your brain, presumably in conjunction with those memories, will give you your personality. So you would expect the whole thing to be digitizable and replicable at some point in the future. But um, I don't know, maybe, maybe it does require a biological continuity, something to think about. Oh, pensions. Pensions, right. Any questions in here? Listening to Brokenomics has made me realise boomers have absolutely sold anyone down the age of 40 down the river. I've come to pieces except the fact that I won't be retiring. Yeah, um, so I don't think it was a conscious thing. I think there were mechanisms in place. I mean, it has resulted in effectively the boomers are trying to prolong an unprecedented period of materialistic turn and they're trying to extend it. And by doing so, they're kind of crushing the younger generations. I don't think it's malicious. It's certainly not malicious as how we got here. I mean, it all started from, you know, these big deficits effectively started from the pension system, them trying to give their parents, the greatest generation served in a war, a more comfortable retirement because they were poor at the time. So I don't blame them. And then once a system is established, they tend to believe that the perpetuation of that system is the highest good because they can't imagine any alternative. And of course, there'll be some boomer in the comments typing in all caps. Not all boomer. Yes, I know you. I know. I know this isn't all of you. I know this isn't all of you. But um, yes, maybe I'll do an episode on the generations as well. Um, oh, and also he says, um, uh, thanks to Dan and Dominic Frisbee. When are you going to get him on the show? I have a pretty good understanding of how money works. Yeah, I'd love to get Dominic on the show. I've spoken to him and said we must get you on but then he had elon retweet one of his videos and it did very very well and presumably he's a busy chap maybe maybe i can prompt him again i mean if i i'm sure i'll bump into it something at some point and then i'll twist his arm and get him on uh, this guy says i've been looking for a sip for a while um looks like it's the best option for me thanks yep uh finish pen fist and feels like such a scam in comparison <coughs> you pay for it until you ret reach your retirement age and if you die well um, all you really achieved was to play for the pension. Yeah, um, yeah. The only one like I, 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 I don't mind the SIP, the self-invested pension, but I mean that works for me. Yeah, this guy's picking up on quantum computers. Yeah, I mean we 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 come back to quantum computers and its effect on blockchains. It's it's at minimum five six years off at the moment if if it gets there at all. And actually, there's some fairly straightforward things that you can do to to make them more secure so I'm, I'm not particularly worried but yeah i'll circle back on that asking about how birth rates are calculated um the nuances of it i'm, I'm not sure actually but i, I would have thought it was quite straightforward what's the number of births per existing person but um yes use a coaster man respect the wood um i am using her there we go Proof of coaster. In, in fact, it's uh, that that was from a. You see, it's got the little logo on it, the the Lotus Eaters logo. Uh, we, we we got a three D printing chap who who produced it for us, which is lovely. I, I I've been thinking about which of his stuff we can put on the store, but it just it never quite rises to the top of the pile of the emergencies that we're dealing with one week or after another. But we must come back to that. I love Brokenomics. Signed up for Lotus Eaters, uh, for Brokenomics and Epochs. Yes, they are they are very good. Those two aren't they? Um, so you buy the Bitcoin on exchange like Kraken, which Dan mentions below. Then what? You need some sort of wallet to ex uh, to hold it away from the exchange. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you can just buy it on Kraken and leave it there. Um, you can get a a, a browser based wallet that basically keeps the it's a wallet on your computer, or you can buy a hardware wallet. Or um, if you don't trust yourself, you can do all three and spread the risk. Um, but ideally, you should. I, the, the purists would say, you know, buy it on exchange, move it to a hardware wallet, protect it, back up your keys, you know, inscribe it, inscribe your keys onto a metal sheet and bury it in the garden and all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you if you start looking for YouTube videos and that kind of stuff, you'll, you'll you'll get loads of advice. But you know, even if you leave it on exchanges, you're probably all right. Probably. If you would like to see the full version of this premium video, please head over to lotuseaters.com and subscribe to gain full access to all of our premium content.